So when I was a senior in high school, I began babysitting for a single mother, Angela. She had two kids, Lauren, who was 12, and Ryan, who was seven. Now, Angela had recently divorced from her husband, and I started babysitting for their family before the separation, so I had a sideline view of the messy situation at hand. After the divorce was finalized, Angela came into a good deal of money and ended up buying a two-story, white brick old house in a historic neighborhood of my town. Now when I say this house was old, it was old. The type of old that carries a smell with it. The type you can hear in every floorboard. The type that carries so much history, you can't but feel like memories are seeping out of the walls. The type of old that is pleasant during the day, magical even. But at night, it seems foreign. Scary, like you're just a guest passing through a structure that will remain long after you have left. So, when I was watching the kids one Friday night, which was a normal night with them, Angela always said she had dinner plans with friends, but I know she was going to a bar and getting plastered because she would always come home and leave the money on the dining room table, yell thank you in a slurred voice, and proceed to walk up the incredibly creaky stairs all without coming into contact with me. On this night, it was around 9pm, and I had just gotten the kids into bed. They each had their own bedrooms, but slept in Ryan's bunk beds because she hated sleeping alone. Usually, Lauren would stay awake and play with her tablet for a little bit before falling asleep. But Ryan usually passed out pretty quickly. Once I could finally get him to stop getting up, you know, for water, or to pee, for another story. It would literally take 20 to 30 minutes to get him to bed. Anyway, it's 9 p.m. I'm alone downstairs in the den. The actual living room didn't have a TV, it was more of a sitting room. And the den, of course, was closed off and had its own door. There's only one way in or out of that room. Which I left open so I could listen upstairs for the kids if they needed me, or if they were sneaking out of bed. As I'm sitting on the couch flipping through the channels trying to find something to watch on TV, I hear a very light knock on the front door. Now, I can see the front door from where I'm sitting because it was a straight shot from the den and the couch was back far enough that all I had to do was lean my head back. I should note here, the only lights that were on inside the house were the upstairs hall light, the den lights, and a small lamp in the kitchen. The only light that allowed me to see the front door is what it cast down the staircase. The front door did have two slender windows on either side of it, but they had curtains that were drawn. So apart from the solid door and two closed curtain windows, I couldn't see outside on the front porch. Maybe it was because the house was so old, and I used to hear it creak all the time, or because I'm a lock freak and keep all entrances, windows included, to any place I'm staying, locked tight. I had seen way too many horror movies to forget to lock a door, so I didn't go peek out one of the windows. I simply decided to ignore it, even though it definitely started up my adrenaline. I continue flipping through the channels. At this point, I'm not really paying attention to the TV anymore. Maybe a minute passes, and I hear the knock again, but this time, it's a little louder. Loud enough that I can no longer pass it off as the house creaking. Quiet enough that it wouldn't wake the kids. Now I have no choice but to get up off the couch and peek out one of the windows. Trying to be sneaky, I crouch down and look out the window from a really low way if someone was watching through the curtains that hopefully they wouldn't see me. But when I draw the curtains back, no one is there. The only things I see are an empty street illuminated by the classic looking street lamps and a very dark front yard due to the shadows being cast by several large wide trees. I'm not gonna lie to you, I was pretty freaked out. I'm a high school senior babysitting two kids asleep in bed in a large old house that already gives me the creeps on its own. I was literally in the setting of every single horror movie right now. Having too much adrenaline to go back and try to watch TV, but not feeling threatened enough to call Angela or the cops yet, I opt for sitting on the bottom step of the staircase, which was right in front of the door, and playing on my phone checking the front door lock before I go to sit down just in case. I kid you not, maybe 10 seconds after I'd sat down, I hear the knock again, but this time, Instead of being sneaky, I simply peek out the curtain at eye level, just in time to see someone run behind one of the trees in the front yard. Let me tell you, I actually let out a sigh of relief. Where I grew up, Ding Dong Ditch was a staple for teenagers, 
and I could handle harmless teenager pranks. Usually, to get the ditchers to stop, just simply turn on the porch light. So that's what I did. I laughed a little as I walked back to the couch. I should have reasoned that it was just a prank from the beginning. But as my butt hits the couch once again, I hear yet another knock. But this time it's even louder than the last two. So now my anxiety has turned to annoyance. I've got two sleeping kids upstairs, and if this knocking persists, it could wake them, leaving me to the task of getting them back to bed. So, up from the couch I go, I pull one of the curtains back revealing an empty lit front porch, and proceed to flick the porch light on maybe five or six times, leaving the light on after I'm done. But instead of going back to the couch, I stand there and wait with the curtain open, daring any teenager to try to ring that doorbell or knock one more time. After a few minutes, I feel confident that I may have gotten them to leave. So I turn the porch light off, close the curtains, and head back to the den. What greets me five minutes later is the loudest knocking I've ever heard. It honestly sounded like someone was trying to break the door down. At this point, I don't know what I'm feeling more, anger or fear. I rush to the front door, pull back a curtain, flip on the light, and I come face to face with a person wearing a full-on bunny rabbit costume. Think the Easter Bunny, but the costume looks 50 years old and is incredibly dirty. For maybe 10 seconds, I just stand there in utter shock. A creepy bunny costume was the last thing I expected to see. A teenager laughing his head off? Sure. An escaped convict wielding a knife? Sure. A dirty old bunny rabbit costume? Not a chance. The creepiest part was, I just standing completely still, staring straight ahead at the front door, until they slowly turned their masked head and looked directly at me. And that is when I noticed that the mesh eyes that are usually on costumes like this, you know the ones to allow a person to have some sort of vision, have been completely cut out. So I'm actually looking right into the eyes of the person hiding inside this thing. And that is what triggers my fight or flight. Not because there was a creep rabbit stranger on the front porch, but because those eyes looked so empty, I felt like I might be swallowed up if I stared into them for too long. I jumped back from the window, pulled the cell phone from my back pocket, and went to dial 911, still keeping my eyes on the bunny man, but further away from the window now. 911, please state your emergency. Um, there, there's a man on my front porch in a creepy bunny costume. He's been knocking on the door for a little over 10 minutes. Okay, ma'am. Is he still on the porch now? Yes, he's staring at me through the window. Can you send someone here, please? Fast. I'm babysitting two kids. Alright, can you give me your name and address? We will get someone en route. I give them my address and name. And then ask, how fast can they be here? Something is really off. We have officers nearby. They should be there shortly. Just stay on the phone with me until they arrive, okay? Okay. Before either of us have a chance to say anything, I feel a tug on my shirt. Which almost made me shit my pants. I've been so focused on the phone call and keeping an eye on the bunny man, I didn't hear the kids come downstairs. When I spun around to look at them, the kids peered at me and could see the bunny man, and both promptly let out a blood-curdling scream. This then triggers the bunny man who begins to bang wildly on the front door again. At the sight of his raging on the front door and two terrified kids, I keep the phone in my hand but pull it away from my ear, wrap the two kids up in my arms before quickly rushing them into the den and closing the door behind us. Even through the closed den door, we can still hear the banging. Laura and Ryan are both crying at this point and refusing to let go of my waist. Will someone get here soon? He's banging on the door again, and the kids are awake and scared shitless. They're only a few minutes out. Can you and the children try to find a safe place to hide? We're in the den with the door locked. There really isn't a place to hide in here. Okay. Keep the door locked and sit tight. Officers will be there soon. Can you still hear him outside? Yes. It's really loud. I'm scared he's going to break the door down. Okay. Officers are a minute out. Can you describe the costume this person is wearing? Um, it's, it's a white old bunny looking costume. It looks really dirty and the eyes are cut out. Are you sure this is a male? But before I could respond, the banging at the front door stops. The banging stopped. 
the banging stopped? Yes, it's quiet now. Okay, just stay where you are. Officers are in your neighborhood. Ma'am, officers have arrived at the scene. Do not exit the room you are in until police announce themselves. Don't you want me to unlock the door for them? Please don't kick it down. This isn't my house. Ma'am, officers say the front door was wide open upon arrival. Just stay where you are. Officers will get to you shortly. But the door was locked. I always keep the door locked. To wrap up this very long story, somehow when the police arrived at the front door, it was wide open. Even though I know it was locked. I had even checked after that second time Bunny Man knocked. But Bunny Man was nowhere to be seen. The police did a search of the house which was all clear. No one inside except the three of us, and they couldn't find him around the outside of the house either. They said they would canvas the area, but I'm not sure if anything came of it. They did leave an officer to wait outside the house until Angela got home. I called her as soon as the police got to us from that room, and I was able to get off the phone with 911. I think they could see how shaken I was. I refused to babysit for anyone for a long time after that night, maybe a solid year. And when I did start babysitting again, I would jump any time I heard anything outside after dark. To this day, I don't know if they ever found the bunny man. I don't know what his intentions were. Maybe it was just to scare the shit out of random people. Or maybe it was something worse. But either way, that was by far the creepiest thing to ever happen to me while babysitting. Ever. I'll tell you my story, but I need to leave out some identifying details. I was living in a very secluded place. I got a reference from one of my friends who was too busy to babysit for this family who was vacationing nearby at a house near the ocean. The house was less than a mile from the beach with nothing but sand between us and it. There were only a couple vacation homes and they were all pitch black when we arrived. The dad had picked me up from my house. There was no moon or street lights, so I could not see the ocean, but we were close enough that I could hear it. This would have been creepy enough all by itself. That wasn't even the scary part. So the parents leave. We have popcorn and watch some TV for an hour or so before it's bedtime. The kid is about three or four, I wasn't sure. He didn't talk to me at all, hitting all the creepy horror movie stereotypical checklist points. That was creepy thing number two. I put him in his travel crib to sleep in and settled down in a chair in the room because I thought maybe he'd be too scared to sleep alone in a strange place with his parents gone. Well, he proceeded to kneel and stare at me through the mesh wall for around 30 minutes. I tried coaxing him to lay down and even offered to tell him a story or two. About this time, the mom calls to check in. I inform her he's not falling asleep. And she says, Oh, you have to leave him alone in there and close the door. You can leave the light on and just ignore whatever you hear. He'll tire himself out eventually. So I'm like, WTF, but whatever. I tell him goodnight, close the door, and he still continues to just stare at me. I go to sit in the next room when this thumping noise starts. It starts slow, then continues to get louder. So I get up to peek into the room and see what he's doing. I know the mom told me not to worry about it, but I had to see what the hell was going on. I look in. He's banging his head on the side of the crib pretty hard. But again, it's one of those flimsy travel cribs, more like a playpen. So he's not really going to hurt himself, but he was lifting the whole thing up a few inches off the ground with the force of his head bouncing off of it. As soon as I went to close the door again, he immediately stopped and stared right at me with this blank and creepy face. I quickly closed the door, and the banging started once again and then continued for another 20 to 30 minutes, then stopped. I peek in one last time and he's fast asleep, butt in the air, face on the mattress, turned to the side so I knew he could breathe okay. The next three hours of complete silence were a bit torturous. I could not wait to leave. It's quite possible this child had some issues with the lack of speech and his behavior, but to not warn me at all was kind of wrong on the parents' part. It goes without saying, no surprise here that I never sat for them again. 
Thank God. This happened around 20 years ago, so the details involved are a little bit hazy. I was in middle school. I lived in an upper middle class neighborhood in a little New England town with virtually no crime. I had just started babysitting and had just taken a whole babysitting course at a local hospital. After putting up some flyers, I got my first gig. It was at a house in my neighborhood, about a five minute walk from my house. They had an older girl who was maybe eight or nine and a young toddler. Their mom was giving me a rundown of their routine and then gave me a little tour of the house. We went into her son's bedroom and she said something to the effect of, hmm, that's odd, why is his window open? quickly shut the window and seemed somewhat distracted from that point on. She hurried through the rest of the tour and then told me to go hang out with the kids while she finished getting ready. About two minutes later, she hurries in, sort of hustles us out the door and then outside. I'm pretty confused at this point, but being an awkward, shy, middle school age girl, I just go along with it. Once we get into the driveway, she pulls me aside and tells me she went back to her bedroom after noticing those windows were open and saw that most of her jewelry was missing. Soon after telling me this, about 10 cop cars come flying in, guns drawn, the whole works. The cops told me to leave so I headed home. Eh, pretty terrified. Turns out the burglar, who had broken in the night before, was still hiding in the son's closet, right next to where we were standing when the mom realized the windows were open. I don't really like to picture or wonder what would have happened had she not noticed that open window and left me there for the night to babysit her two kids. Needless to say, that was the beginning and end of my babysitting career. I used to babysit for a family that had two boys, one ten and one twelve. They were a lot more easier to care for than you hear about boys those age are. They played a lot outside in the backyard. They even had a full tree house that they spent a lot of time in. A lot of times when I was over there babysitting, they would spend a lot of the time just playing in that tree house. There were even times when their parents would let them camp out in that tree house. Normally just in the summer, but in those instances, I only had to go up and check on them every so often. This took place during a pretty hot summer. The kids were all excited about sleeping out in the treehouse that night, and their mom told me it would be okay, just to check on them ever so often, and I tended to always do this, including after they'd gone to sleep. So I went back and forth several times. The boys were staying up late reading comics and just being boys. When I went to check on them around 11 o'clock, they had finally fallen asleep. I turned off the light and went back to the house. On the way back, I paused for just a moment. There's a light on in the second story of the house, and that wasn't unusual on its own, but as I was walking back, I saw the light turn off. This definitely wasn't a case of my eyes playing tricks on me either. I wasn't sure what to do at first, but I took out my cell phone and called 911. And after that, I climbed back into the treehouse, turned on the light quickly, and woke up the boys. I didn't tell them what I'd seen, but only that they would hear police sirens and not to worry about it. Soon the police arrived and I watched them from the treehouse as they went in. An officer soon came over to the treehouse as well to indicate to us that it was okay to come down. I watched again as cops came out of the house with a man in cuffs. They had found him, hunkered down in the boys room closet, holding a knife. I don't know if he was waiting for them, and I don't know if he was waiting for me. Maybe he was just there to rob the place. All I know... I'm very thankful that I saw that light go off. I was babysitting for a family that I've been doing this for for several years. They always paid me very well and gave me extra money for pizza for dinner and all that. So after a couple of hours after the parents had left and once the kids had done all of their homework, I went ahead and ordered the pizza. When the pizza guy arrived, it was a different guy than I'd seen before. He was a bit awkward at first, not really seeming to acknowledge that I was there, just kind of giving me this creepy look. After a moment, he looked over at the car and told me he had gotten the pizza wrong. 
He went back over to his car, grabbed another pizza, and came back to deliver this one. He gave me the pizza, I paid him, and he left. When I opened the pizza, I noticed that I actually had gotten the wrong pizza. I just assumed this guy was new and had made some sort of mistake. I called the pizza parlor to let them know, and they told me that they would send a new one out. About half an hour later, the kids were getting pretty hungry and frustrated. But finally, the pizza came not long after. It was the same guy. He apologized and we exchanged pizzas. He was about to leave before I checked the pizza myself, and once again, it was the wrong pizza. I called the guy back and he apologized, but by now, I was getting irritated. He went back to his car, got another pizza, confirmed that it was the right pizza, and then he left. I was just bugged by this guy, but happy that I finally was able to get the kids fed. Halfway through eating the pizza, the doorbell rang. I went to check on it and it was that same pizza guy. He told me that I'd overpaid for the pizza, which I know that I haven't. He gave me $10 and I just took it and he left. Thankfully he didn't come back for the rest of the night, which was great. I put the kids to bed and read until his parents came home. I got into my car to go home. About two hours later there was a knock at the door. I was still awake because I was studying for a big test. When I answered it, it was the police. Someone had broken into the house I was babysitting for, claiming he was my boyfriend. I had to refute the story and identify who it was. Don't think it comes as any surprise to anyone reading this that it was the pizza guy. He didn't know I was the babysitter and assumed that I lived there. He tried to get in late at night and got caught, claiming, I'm your daughter's boyfriend. Well, obviously he went to jail, and I have no doubt that he kept screwing up on purpose in order to keep coming back to that house. I'm sorry that that family I babysit for had to go through this, but I still watched over their children often.